One of the reasons we use exploits in rough space buildings, such as stability bunkers, is that walls are so much stronger than doors. One stone wall is as strong as two and a half sheet metal doors. A sheet metal wall is as strong as almost six sheet metal doors. In this video, I present a solo, duo, trio starter base with a novel way of using a roof as stability seal. It takes 33 satchels to reach the TC and up to 60 satchels for a full rate without requiring any blueprint. And that at a cost of just 14k stone, 4k frags and 26 high qual. With a very affordable upkeep of 2.2k stone, 1.2k frags and 5 high qual per day. Which leaves you plenty of time for farming scrap, PvPing or simply being lazy. It can be built in tiny steps so it's perfect as a starter base for early wipe. The novel stability seal mechanics works by placing an upgraded roof onto a twig half wall. The roof will stick through the ceiling and, in this design, block the entrance to a chute that leads into the core of the base. If the twig wall gets destroyed, the roof collapses, which unblocks the entrance. Shout out to Zetch who discovered this trick. This mechanic has one advantage that other stability seals do not have. It works at height, which in theory would allow to stack several of them. A wooden roof leads up to one of the two entrances on the second floor. The outer door functions as single door airlock, so even if you get jumped by door campers while leaving the base, they won't get far. Behind these double doors, which can also remain wood, we find one part of the shooting floor. Through these doors we enter the other part of the shooting floor, which is a one-to-one -one copy of the first part. Having a shooting floor and two separate entrances makes it very easy to deal with door campers, so they have a hard time of trapping you inside the base. Behind these double doors we find the drop chests. The single door leads to the chute, which is currently sealed by the sheet metal roof. The sleeping bags are located in the central square of the base. On one side we find the main loot room. Since we do not assume BPs, wooden window bars will guard it for now. But of course you should replace it with bulletproof windows once you get the BP. Behind the sleeping bags there are three furnaces. On the other side we find the starter unit with a TC, a barbecue and additional boxes. Behind the twig wall we find space for the workbench. You'll probably start out with a tier 1 bench and later replace it with a tier 2 bench. Behind the single door we find the shoe. Since no blueprints are assumed, we use a furnace to jump upstairs. However, if you find a mailbox, consider replacing the furnace with it. If you find one, a shotgun trap can guard the shoe to buy you some time in an online raid. For the start, we build a one by one with a double door. A TC in the corner, a number of boxes, and up to two sleeping bags. We then extend the base into a three by one with an extra triangle to the left and a single door to the right. Use twig half walls when placing the furnaces to ensure that they won't block further build steps. Once the furnaces are smelting, replace the wooden doors with sheet metal doors. Replace the small boxes with large boxes. And move the sleeping bags into the center one by one. To be able to place the half height walls in the loot rooms, Go outside, build these half-height wooden floor tiles. Do not destroy them as they allow you to replace the walls in case raiders break them. Also leave the foundations because they're going to be part of the honeycomb. Now you can place a half-height triangle and two more large boxes as shown. Take out the double door before placing them or you will trap yourself.
barbecue will fit nicely into this corner. The workbench goes as far back as possible into the triangle. The main loot room can be designed however you want. Here we chose the unlootable design. If raiders have not seen the Prince Vitz video on overcoming this exploit, they need to spend another 23 satchels to recover the loot. Note that I placed the left box further forward while all the other large boxes are placed as far back as possible. This is done simply because otherwise the furnace would block the access to the box. Next, we close off the entrance to create the chute. A furnace will serve as jump chest. A half high triangle inside the chute significantly increases the base's durability. Remember to crouch jump if you have trouble getting out of the chute. Place single doors left and right of the chute and walls onto the triangle. The boxes here can be used to quickly drop off loot when you come in from farming. Make the double door open outwards so you can use it as an airlock. Use the wooden triangles as temporary stairs to get into the base. From this moment on the base can be effectively sealed. Place the twig half wall and the roof before going offline. Destroy the twig wall when you come online again. Once you start piling up metal fragments, upgrade the core to sheet metal. This increases the durability of the base to 23 satchels. Please note that I did not upgrade the wooden stairways, any door frame or the drop chest roof. For the honeycombing, place triangles all around the base and upgrade them to stone. You will need those square foundations to place the roof that will allow you to get back up onto the base.
Then place stone walls all around the base. Complete the honeycombing by placing stone floor tiles. Next, we add the shooting floor. Place window and door frames as shown. Right now, it would also be a good idea to upgrade the ceilings of the loot room to armored, which will cost you 13 high qual each. A little trick for the shooting floor that Zetch discovered is to place small wooden signs low like this. They will completely cover you while you crouch, which allows to fully charge the composite bolt to hurl death at door characters. Copy the shooting floor design one to one on the other half of the base. Now you place the roof seal, your loot rooms are protected against 33 satchels. If you progress further into the wipe, these are the recommended upgrades. Replace the tier 1 workbench with a tier 2. Use bulletproof windows for the main loot room. Place a shotgun trap pointing at the chute inside the TC room. and replace the double door with a garage door. On the shooting floor, replace the wooden window bars with metal ones or metal embrasures. Another shotgun trap can go above the chute. The base gives you a lot of protection early on while you're still collecting blueprints, so it's ideal for early wipe. If you continue further into the wipe, it can serve as a flanking base to your main base. As always, if you try it, let me know how it works for you. Until then, Evil Wurst, out.